So this is the Squirrel dashboard, and I'm going to switch to the browser view, the published view. So this is what it looks like there. So as Paul mentioned, uh, the concept for this came up from one of our customers who they have some of their clients who were in the path of Hurricane Ian. And they wanted to be able to reach out to those customers and make contact with them if perhaps they were in that path and could potentially um, have damage to their locations. So that's the concept behind this. And uh, in order to be able to do this, we, uh, we meaning Taylor, <laughs> created a custom component for Squirrel that he was able to quickly put together and make available. And uh, that's how we were able to show this data. So it's a combination of different data sources. The customer data and locations, of course, were supplied uh, by the customer and their database. And so where the customers were located and they already had latitude and longitude for those customers. This is not those customer locations. This is basically just cities <laughs> because of course it's not real customer data. Um, this is just demo data. And so uh, we put together this demo dashboard and most of that work was done by my colleague Tirza in combination with the component that Taylor uh, created for this. And uh, so let me show you a little bit how it works. And then uh, Taylor's gonna talk more about the custom component. So this was the path of Ian, just uh, when we got this information, uh, the request. It actually, it, the day before Ian was sitting out here just a little ways before it had made landfall, and then it hit. And so with this component, I can uh, use my control key and spin and see uh, locations here. I can switch to satellite view as well and see which customers were in the path. I have a cousin that lives right in this area here <laughs> and they were hit. Their house fortunately did not sustain much damage, but they were without power for 10 days. And it really uh, got me thinking. Uh, fortunately, we don't have to deal with that much in Arizona with uh, you know, big weather conditions that could disrupt the power. And I would not be prepared <laughs> to live without power for 10 days. So it was something that has been on my mind a lot since then. All right, so let's look at some of the information on this dashboard. I'm going to scroll back out a little bit here. And from here, I can look at the data a couple of different ways. This chart over here on the left is showing my 10 closest to the path and their distance in miles. So it might not look um, that far away, especially if I move up here and come in where it turned again and hit landfall in South Carolina. If I zoom in a little bit here, initially it looks like it's gonna hit, hit Hilton Head, like this customer right here, it looks, dead on, but if you zoom in really close, then you can see it's, it was actually predicted to go about 20 miles from that closest customer there. Um, and again, this is just a data point on there, but uh, we could get some information about the customers that were in the path and what information, like say their recent sales, um, look at it from top highest sales if we wanted to. And then we could also click on a data point as well. So let me back out again. And if I wanted to say contact uh, this customer, I've got their phone number and my contact there and how far they were from the hurricane path. So just by clicking on any one of these data points. Okay, so that's the basic concept.
being able to give them information, the contact, the phone number of who, which one of their customers was along that path. So we started working on this and then as uh, time went on, now Ian, of course, is old news <laughs> and the new hurricane is Nicole. So we have as well uh, plotted some data for Nicole. Back out here. Nicole's on a different path. Um, and this data is not quite up to date. Uh, it's as of yesterday. It became a hurricane yesterday for a little while and it's been downgraded again to a tropical storm. So it's not as likely to do as much damage, at least not wind damage, but it may do uh, some flooding damage for some of the customers. So you could, again, zoom in on the map and uh, see which customers might be in that path and make contact with them. Okay. The other thing that we added to this map, um, we have some public links. So the hurricane path information came from this website here. And same for Nicole, I could click on this link here and it takes me to a public link and showing the current scenario. Here we are with Nicole. And let me scroll down on the page and it shows latitude and longitude for each of the locations as the time has progressed. So right now we're somewhere on today here and it's downgraded to a tropical storm and it's showing the latitude and longitude and the winds are only in the 50 to 60 mile an hour range. Okay, so we provided the links for them on there so that they could see that. And then we also thought, well, what if they wanted to look at hurricane, uh, sorry, earthquake information or tornadoes? And so I included some links there. Uh, this is the US Geological Survey site. And so this is where recent earthquakes have happened. They're small, as you can see over here on the left, although uh, I've been in a 3.9 earthquake and when you're close to that, <laughs> it doesn't feel comfortable. So that was an option that they could look at as well. And then tornadoes. There's been a little bit, not much of tornado activity. All of these warnings have expired already, uh, but they could look at information for that as well. So it doesn't have to be just a one-time use scenario they could uh, look at information for various weather type um, conditions, natural disasters. Uh, we, as long as we can pull in that latitude and longitude information, uh, we can plot it on the map and make it interactive with our customer data. Uh, in this case, we have the mocked up customer data in web intelligence. We're using Infoburst to pull that in into Squirrel. And so it's a combination of webby information and uh, publicly available uh, data for the latitude and longitude for plotting the hurricanes in this case. All right. Any questions before I turn it over to Taylor? I don't see any questions at the moment, uh, Roxanne. Okay. Taylor, I'll let you, let me stop sharing okay. and hand it over. All right. So yeah, so as Roxanne said, uh, this was kind of a, a unique um, request that came in um, about a, a day or two before the hurricane actually hit the mainland. Um, the, the client was, uh, Asking if we uh, if we had any sort of component or ability to map uh, this type of stuff, um, he was saying that he's been trying different dashboarding tools and stuff, and he hasn't been able to quite get what he what he's looking for. Um, uh, luckily, the Squirrel team 
uh, this past summer released their uh, big, huge uh, custom component add-on marketplace and API and everything. And I've had some experience developing with that and I can feel, I felt pretty confident about turning stuff around. So uh, I replied back to him and told him, you know, just give me the rest of today. Let me see what I can come up with. Um, and so I started kind of digging around. Um, Google Maps was uh, the main part of the component that I kind of uh, lean towards just because it's a fairly easy to use. They have a robust API and everything. Um, so that's the base of my component is uh, Google Maps, if you weren't able to tell. Uh, as far as what I wanted to, was looking to accomplish, um, uh, I was kind of looking to uh, looking to do something or at least give the, the capability to do stuff like this. So uh, to be able to, to plot markers, to uh, draw a path, to draw a Kind of like a, a polygon shape um, for forecasting, or um, or if you want to reverse it and show just where the hurricanes currently hit and what the severity of um, where it's hitting, uh, depending on if it's uh, uh, what level it's at, um, you can do a color heat uh, alerting on the the poly shapes and everything. Uh, so that's kind of what I set out to to start uh, developing. Um, and I was able to actually get most of this done uh, in less than a day uh, between the uh, Squirrel API and the Google API. Uh, pretty simple to, to build out. And I'll kind of show you, I'll show you a little bit of the back end. But um, as far as the actual component goes uh, inside Squirrel here, um, you're able to, uh, to get it. Uh, downloaded from the, the Squirrel add-on marketplace. Uh, and so once you do, you'll have it in your list of add-on components here. So we could take it right from here and uh, plot it onto our canvas and start uh, hooking it all up. Um, some of the general uh, functionalities I have available in this current version right now. Um, Google Maps requires an API key uh, for, uh, for using it. Uh, which I can't include uh, on the component itself. So I have a setup to where uh, a client can uh, hook up their own API key that they have. Um, you can control the center of the map. You can control the zoom of the map. Um, markers, uh, we can come down here. So if you have a, a column or row of uh, latitude longitude points, uh, you can set those as your markers and it'll plot them out. Um, as well as you're able to customize the actual shape of the marker. So you notice that these aren't the typical uh, red pin that you see on a lot of Google Maps stuff. Um, if you have your own set of custom marker uh, icons, or if you want to use a uh, uh, free to use on the website or something. Uh, you can set the URL path to those and it'll plot those all as uh, the one you're looking for. Um, and then I also have the ability, as you can see, to, to draw a path with a line. Um, so same kind of idea as the markers, uh, you just give it a, a list of coordinates uh, and it'll plot it in that order as well as able to control the color of the line. And then the polygon, the circle, as you see here, um, you plot those as uh, coordinates plus uh, a radius. So you can control the size of the actual shape um, itself, as well as the colors. Uh, so right now I have it to where the, the line would be the, the forecasted path of the hurricane with the, the polygon being the, um, kind of where it's uh, hit historically. Uh, I can also switch this up here. So if I wanted to, to reverse them to make them look more like the uh, kind of prototypical uh, hurricane pass charts here, I can switch them up. You can see this kind of resembles more like, a, kind of like the ones I was showing you where the uh, the estimate kind of has some uh, margin of error for the, the forecast and everything. Um, and so uh, let me jump into a little bit of the, uh, just the 
back in here. Um, so uh, as I said, this is um, how you get this uh, the add-on. Um, it's gonna be available for the public use very soon. So um, even if you uh, aren't looking to chart necessarily um, hurricanes or storms or anything, uh, I try to make this uh, generic as I could um, so that it could have multiple uses. But uh, on the Squirrel uh, website, they have, if I can find, here we go, uh, the Squirrel Marketplace, um, they have a, a gallery of different add-on uh, components here. Um, so if you go into here, uh, you find one you like, you click into it, uh, and then there will be a button up here that says Get Add-on. All you do is you click that button up there, uh, assuming you're logged into the website, uh, and then, then it will show up on your list of add-on components right here, and you can just use it as a normal component. So uh, the plan is that I will have the Google Map uh, component up here in the next day or so. Uh, that's my goal, so that anyone here sitting on the call seeing this uh, and they're a Squirrel user, they'll be able to have access to, to this as well. Um, as far as the code behind it goes, I don't know how many people we have here that are uh, avid coders, so I won't dive too deeply into this, but just to kind of give you a general sense of um, what creating a custom component looks like, uh, the Squirrel team has actually done a pretty good job of uh, not only developing an API, but also giving you a very nice starting point for developing. Um, so there's only a really three main files uh, and depending on the complexity of your component that you're really gonna be changing. Um, they have the, the property panel here, which this is just a JSON uh, file. Uh, and this is what's gonna be building out the properties on the right side here. Um, and if you go to their API, they have a bunch of the different types uh, set out. Uh, so they have the input box, which is kind of what you're seeing here where you can bind it uh, to your spreadsheet. Uh, they have check boxes, radio buttons, drop downs, all different sorts of things. Uh, you can see they they start you off here with a couple of examples for their uh, hello hello world example. Um, and along with that, you just tell it uh, you you give each of the properties a a, a name. Um, so we have a data and a response, and then you just tell it which way is which direction are the the properties coming in. So. Uh, the data is going to be coming in from the dashboard to the, the component, and then this is going to be uh, something that the, comp uh, the component sends to the dashboard as a, a, a write back or interactivity. Um, this is their, uh, their sample HTML, which looks a, uh, a lot more complicated than actually is just because they're doing some uh, SVG stuff. Uh, but this is going to be just your basic HTML. Um, if I can move the presentation thing here, uh, this is going to be the actual uh, your add-on.component.ts is going to be a, kind of the actual um, the backend heavy lifting of everything, um, and even this is they have it uh, set up pretty easily to kind of understand here. Um, so they have some functions kind of built in already for you. Um, so they have like the this onset position. Uh, this triggers when uh, the position of the component changes in the squirrel. Uh, onset size this changes when the the size of the component uh, changes inside the dashboard. Um, this on init state. This is what triggers when it the component loads in the dashboard. Um, on property change. So uh, a lot of times we'll be using bindings for the spreadsheet and. Sometimes those bindings will change depending on if a selection is made or if data is changed. And so this will, this will trigger um, on any change on that, uh, as well as this on complete. So if you're changing multiple things at once, you can wait for them all to be done and then fire, fire off uh, whatever you need to do. Um, and then process data, this is just their example of sending data uh, back to the, the component. Um, but then if we jump into my actual code for the Google Maps, you can see this is my properties window. So it's not too complex. Uh, basically, I just have a few more input boxes where I define like the API key, 
um, coming in, uh, the center, the zoom, um, my HTML, I can find what I did with it. Uh, pretty simple. Um, I'm, I'm basically defining my Google map uh, component here. Uh, and then also my markers, my line and my, my polygon. Um, if we look at the code, I'm setting a, a few variables up at the top here, but otherwise it's uh, most of the same here. So I still have all kind of my defaults, set position, set size, all that stuff. And they'll have some stuff that happens. Uh, this looks way more complicated than it actually is. I'm basically just watching for every single uh, property that comes in and doing something with it. Um, yeah, so I, so that's kind of a, uh, if we deep dive into it. Um, but yeah, we were able to kind of get this turned around in uh, about a day, um, get this in the customer's hands and uh, get them to start going with it. And um, and we've already, I've been talking with him, discussing kind of uh, future enhancements and stuff he wants. Um, he's actually kind of looking for, for maybe this next firm coming in. So, um, so it's evolving, it's changing and it, um, but overall, it was a pretty successful uh, venture, and it was a pretty interesting story. So, um, <laughs> thank you, Taylor. That's uh, it's fascinating. I'm not sure that everyone's going to be building Squirrel add-on components. Um, so, uh, um, showing us the code there was uh, fascinating, but I'm not sure that uh, too many people will be doing that. But it's good to know that it can be done. Um, I think the more interesting questions that came in were, you know, well, you know, what is the tie in between Squirrel and uh, uh, and business objects? And of course, you know, Squirrel was based on the uh, on the same concept of Excelsius, the um, old business object dashboarding tool, where it uses a spreadsheet as its data model for manipulating um, the data. Um, Lots of people have adopted Squirrel in the last uh, 18 months um, and are using it for all sorts of interesting low-code, no-code um, application development solutions, particularly things like um, value calculators, um, mobile applications, um, applications like the one you just showed us, um, you know, tracking impacts of, uh, of hurricanes uh, and so forth. But the beauty of this solution is that these things can be put together very fast. Mm -hmm. And so in many cases, the clients already have the data sitting in business objects or accessible through business objects, universes or web reports. And Squirrel has a direct connector to business objects to be able to retrieve that information or using InfoBurst, we can read and write back um, to uh, to caches that are populated with web intelligence uh, data sets. So um, that's the uh, that's the time that's how it was used in this particular case and uh, and so forth. But fantastic job, uh, Roxanne and Taylor. Thank you so much for sharing that with us. And of course to Tirza as well who participated in uh, in this uh, this prototype. Um, I don't see any more questions. So over to you, Lucy. Awesome. Yes, uh, as I said in the beginning of this session, I was pretty excited to get to see that. Um, and well, uh, while we're in the squirrel topic, I wanted also to brag about the little uh, squirrel dashboard that I uh, that we at InfoSoul actually work uh, together. Um, it's kind of like a pretty uh, sweet thing, you know. Like as in, as you know, InfoSoul we like uh, always to share the love uh, uh, with the community, with our customers, with our uh, event attendees, pretty much even with our employees, with everyone. So if you can see my screen, I can. Kind of like just wanted to show you uh, some of the uh, stuff that we actually do. Uh, we have partnered with the city of Phoenix and uh, you, uh, as you can see in the dashboard, we are part of the Adopt the Street program. And uh, well, um, for all the uh, people that live here in Phoenix, uh, you guys, you know, we are extending the invitation if you ever want to be part of this cleanup event. So basically what we do, we have a street segment and we go in and uh, we definitely, you know, clean up on the sidewalks and stuff. It's always nice to get to see the people that attend these uh, cleanup events. Uh, mostly have been uh, the InfoSolites, as we call all the employees, uh, the InfoSolittles, which uh, we like to bring our, our little people in the family, 
like our kids, nephews, uh, nieces. Um, but of course, friends and family are always welcome to participate. And uh, just to quickly show you um, the uh, impact that we have made so far this year well here let me show you the bags that we have collected during the quarters of 2022 well see about 16 trash uh, bags have been collected and picked up by the city of phoenix and that's all uh the infosol uh friends family and the infosol lights and infosol littles that have been part of uh these cleanup events we have picked up about six uh in total of recycling bags but the interesting part we are also keeping <laughs> record of all the cigarette butts that we actually find uh, while we're doing the cleanup. Uh, it was like surprising the first time that we did uh, the first event that there were so many. So we are like, Paul was like, we have to keep track of those too. So yes, the streets, the our street segment has been uh, saved with uh, 1,324 cigarette butts, as you can believe. So uh, yeah, so that's what we do. That's what we do. If um, you should be getting uh, the link to this dashboard for you to learn more about these uh, cleanups events that we do, we host uh, quarterly. Um, of course, you're, you're welcome to join us. You're welcome to register. And hopefully we get to see some of the Phoenix attendees uh, uh, joining us one of these um, uh, cleanup events. So be sure to follow those links and learn more. And uh, it's not as excited as the weather uh, dashboard that Roxanne and Taylor did, but we are very proud to show that. Uh, and uh, what a best way to definitely, you know, give back to the community by uh, hosting these kind of like events. 